member of that Super Bowl winning team, two-time Super Bowl champ, and he's got a terrific podcast called Greenlight. Chris Long back on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Chris? I'm good. Podcast not bad. Today kind of sucked. Well, I saw that, um, Chris, on on Twitter. Uh, I have this in my back pocket. I might as well put it on the table right here. I did notice, um, you know, that you tweeted out before our show, green light will be out later today, and then the string went to maybe, and then it's out. It sucks. Enjoy. I think you've got to work on your promotion game, Chris, not to tell you how to handle it. I like doing the promotion thing because then you might overpromise under deliver. So does it really suck? Were you not pleased with the result of who's on? What are you, what are you talking about? It was just me and my co-host. We didn't have a guest. Everybody big-timed us, and then, you know, we kind of ended up with nothing to talk about. After this weekend in sports, like, I don't know, we just had the, the, the schedule. We had the draft. Right. Didn't feel like there was anything going on. The playing game is like uh, the, the playing games are happening over the next two days, right? Yeah. So we didn't really have anything. You ever have days like that, Rich? Well, today's that day, Chris. Thanks for coming on. That's why you called me. (laughs) (laughs) No. Let's be be honest. You called me because there was a white pass rusher that signed with Philly. So you you triangulated that in your head. And I loved how you texted me like, how you been, buddy? Why don't you come on the show? No, hold on a second. talk to you about some random stuff. Chris, now then. I did say this at the top of the show. I always shoot everybody straight. Chris, did I not bring this up? My Chris. Chris Brockman, did yes, I not bring yes. this up? Okay. You did bring I brought up. it up that I did see you trending yes. on Twitter yesterday. <laughs> I found out why you were trending. I am yeah. not having you on to talk about Ryan Kerrigan. We will talk about it. I mean, because that is a, st- a story. <laughs> but but I did, did say, you know what? Hey, I like talking to Chris. It's been a while. I'd love to yeah. chat with him. I'd love to hear what he has to say. I always find it interesting to talk to people. And I told you I like talking to interesting people. That's the way, you know, otherwise I'm wasting my time on this listen, show. Listen, when I woke up yesterday and I was trending, I thought maybe I died. And I was like <laughs> my ghost holding my phone and people were saying either nice things about me or I got canceled. I didn't know what happened. Like when you're trending, it's not good if you don't know why you're trending. So then how does it land on Chris Long that Chris Long is trending because Ryan Kerrigan uh, left Washington football team to go to Philadelphia? How does that hit (laughs) Chris Long? Because the entirety of my mentions are like, same guy. And I was like, well, that's a great compliment to me. I mean, Ryan Kerrigan's a hell of a player. I think he's going to help him. Um, But I also know Philly fans every time we we sign any white edge rusher, whether he's an unsigned (laughs) undrafted free agent he's going to get the chris long comp now <laughs> that's what you texted me i read that out before he's like what's up man white edge rusher bat signal question mark is that, that's is what, that what you needed <laughs> <laughs> send up the white edge rusher bat signal get me chris long <laughs> yeah it shouldn't be it shouldn't be me for the record but i just have a podcast hey look but you you want a super bowl you know what i mean when yep. you you were kevin hart stuff was pretty right on he was. He said that you guys were confident going into that Super Bowl that the defense could get after Brady. You did. A fellow Michigan man actually did nail Brady and did knock a ball loose in a, in a very big moment. Uh, obviously, you were involved in that. Points. Huh? 82 points. He wasn't far off. No, he, did say, he did say that Kevin, that, well, the 83 was going to be all Philadelphia's points. But yeah, the, it he, was. He was wrong about you, one thing. You know, they the, scored a lot, too. I know. They did score a lot as well. So, what, what, what do you make of the NFC East right now? Uh, as we are in the middle of May, yeah. this is something we can start to look over the steering mm-hmm. wheel. Because the one thing that I did see uh, very, very few times does the in- schedule release actually inform me of something. But when I saw Washington football team schedule and the final five games are all in the NFC East that means that that the reigning division winner won't play many division games until December which means this division's flat out up for grabs it's the way I look yeah, at which it. is which is uh, <laughs> how it always seems to be one way or another uh lately I don't know um I, I'm excited about the division because you know all the teams can go any which way right like we don't know what to expect with anybody and I'm more like the person who likes chaos with the schedule um, I, I like, you know, like uh, sign me up for the Darnold revenge game. I know you're going to be watching, but like yeah. that's going to get more eyes, you know, in my household than some marquee matchup. Cause I like the chaos. So I think, you know, having all those division games at the end and with the new week in the schedule, one of the biggest concerns was like, maybe these week 18 games are, you know, aren't going to matter as much. Um, but they really backloaded the conference games and a team like Washington, who I'm excited about, actually. Um, you know, Fitzmagic's there, and I love the young core they built. And defensive linemen that's been on some really good hustle defensive lines that played, you know, balls to the wall. 
that's the kind of group they have. So it's easy to watch them. Um, I think they have as good a chance as anybody of being in it at the end. And the reality is they're all going to have a great chance. You know, one thing coaches want to tell their players is, hey, it's all right in front of us. You ask any player, that's the thing the coach tells you after you lose a tough game or he cusses you out. But at the end, he says, it's all right in front of us. And team like Washington, team like Philly, you know, the entire NFC East is going to have that opportunity. And there's teams like Denver. If you look at Denver's schedule, uh, you know, I gave them out as one, one team that I, I like their upside, whether they get Aaron or not. Because all their conference games are going to be after their bye week and late in the season, and they've got a chance to get out ahead of it early. And so you can keep teams engaged that way because you know you're still in it. So when you look at the Eagles, though, like we had Howie Roseman on the week after the draft, and you know Jalen Hurts is there, and I asked him, is this a one-year tryout for Jalen Hurts because the acquisition of Wentz will most likely net the team based on the trade that they also made with Miami atop the draft this year, three first-rounders next year, meaning they could draft whoever they darn well please essentially next year by aggregating these picks together, or maybe trading those picks away for somebody that might pop free, uh, you know, potentially in a trade. What do you think their long-term plan is in Philadelphia? Well, I got to think think they're evaluating, right? I mean, like – you come into this year, you know, like you like some things you see with Jalen. I certainly like everything I see from the neck up. Like to me, I want to, I want to see more than four games of him playing quarterback. Right? I think it's natural because we we saw seasons of Carson Wentz and the same people calling for Jalen Hurts are telling me, uh, you know, we've seen enough Jalen Hurts after four games. And Carson was an MVP for a year, and look where he ended up. So, you know, it's it's a small sample size. I think you know development of this young quarterback is going to be big, but I think he's like you know, consummate kind of leader, locker room guy. So you have that to start with. But the truth is, and as it often is with college football, is like you don't really know who the quarterbacks are next year. I mean, like, and next year, the way you look at it, there's only a few names I even know. Now, I'm no expert when you talk to people that are experts. It's not like a hallmark quarterback year. But you're right. They grab some capital because they want to possibly, well, this isn't just why they did it, but it helps. Next year, they can reach up and snag that quarterback of the future if they don't think Jalen's the guy. Um, and, you know, I think one of the keys you have to look at is who are the teams that are going to just flat out suck this year? You know, do those, do those teams have their guy? And because of the influx of young quarterbacks, I do think there will be some teams, a la Jacksonville, no offense to Jets, who I'm really excited about, um, but you can't put all your eggs in that basket. They could be a bottom five team just by virtue of needing to work on that roster, and Big Joe Douglas will. But, you know, it takes time. They're teams that are going to have their quarterback and maybe a top pick. So you're kind of rooting for the teams that are set with their guys to struggle next year. And then you have the capital and you have the flexibility to move up if Jalen's not the guy. Chris Long here on the Rich Eisen Eisen Show, two-time Super Bowl champion and uh, the host of Greenlight, co-host of Greenlight Podcast, um, which you should go get despite him saying this latest episode sucks. Any other day, but today. But um, what, what do you think is going on with Aaron Rodgers? Ear to the ground, talking to people, yeah. not even not even that. But what 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 do you think is up with him and Green Bay? Chris? Man, I just think it's one of those things that you have to consider Aaron's entire experience in football. Like his formative years have been, like anybody would say they'd want to be Aaron Rodgers, right? Like we'd all trade places, right? But at the same time, like you know, to Aaron Rodgers, you know, it's all he knows is being Aaron Rodgers, and it wasn't always easy. Uh, you know, I know nobody's going to feel sorry for him now, but you know, JUCO kid, right? Cal guy wasn't like a you know a heralded star in college and was a guy who sat and gave the NFL free B-roll I always tell guys I'm like do you really want to sit in that draft room and give the NFL free B-roll for a decade um he gave them plenty and then sat behind Favre and those differences were documented and then the entire you know draft pick deficit there when it comes to investment and like outwardly at the top of the draft what he wants to do and I think the worst part about Aaron is even when he succeeds, he's, he's, he's arguing against himself because I don't know how those guys would be. A lot of the guys he's throwing to south of Devontae Jones, I don't know. Um, or Devontae Adams, sorry. Um, I don't know who those guys are. And that's what Aaron does. He makes everybody better. So like even when, when you know, if you're trying to make a case that he doesn't have enough weapons, he's so good he's going to elevate guys' games to the point where they are scoring 30 a game. So I think, you know, there's a chip on his shoulder, and I think what he wants is security. And the only way you prove to a quarterback like that 
that he has security in the building where he's won a Super Bowl and wants to win two. You know, Brett won one, and, you know, um, there's a certain quarterback who played 16 years there. He's on his 16th or 17th year. Like, yep. I think he wants to finish in Green Bay. And I think it's just up to Green Bay to say, like, hey, we, we're not going to stick to our plan we had two years ago when we bet on his demise. He just played like an MVP. So let's be logical about this. The, guy, the ball is coming off his arm like nothing you'd ever seen. And he's 38 years old. So, like, it's time to not bet against him and show him some love. And I think, like, if he got traded, like, let's say he got traded to Denver, Rich, what are they not going to have by virtue of him getting traded to Denver? The two first-round picks that he's arguing like hell over filling with a weapon. So, you know, it's kind of a wash for him. I think the best chance he has to win it all is in Green Bay. I I think they have to commit to him. I agree with you. And then, but here's my question for you, Chris Long, because, you know, security is definitely one thing. And, you know, I, I totally understand that. And then you pointed out, rightfully so, that he makes guys better and that um, he knows who he's throwing to and he knows which guys he can make better just by that aspect. And then you hear that the cutting of Jake Kumaro after he said last September that he loves this kid, he thinks that he can throw to him, they cut him the next day as he said, the last time I said publicly I like somebody, he wound up in Buffalo, referring to this kid. <laughs> so so my question for you is, would you, do you like the idea of allowing a quarterback to – have a say in roster building, would you say that that is a good way to go about things in the NFL? I think he, de- I think he deserves a seat at the table. I think quarterbacks transcend, and listen, I hit him for a living, and yes. like most defensive players will tell you we don't like him or whatever, but like you can't win without one. You can, but it's going to be an interesting process in building, and is it sustainable to win without one year after year? Like You could you know, have your one year where the defense is a top five defense and that sort of thing, but I just I feel like you got to have a seat at the table, and I think we worry about the slippery slope thing, where like oh, it's going to turn to the NBA, it's going to turn into like a like a league where players just have all the say, like you know whether you like that or not. It's not because there's not many Aaron Rodgers, so why are we worried about it being a slippery slope? And it's not like the Packers um, are necessarily like the the world's best, you know, have the world's best draft history. I mean, I'm not saying they're the worst, I'm not saying they're the best, but I think he at least deserves a place at the table when talking about offensive personnel and the same thing with Russell and the same thing with like any top five quarterback in the league. It's not that hard to tell who should and who shouldn't be talking about this stuff. There's a Mendoza line for quarterbacks. We talked about on the pod, like where's that Mendoza line for quarterbacks that's south of here should just shut up. But it's up to that quarterback to know. Yeah. And I, I, you know, you heard Ron Wolf basically say that uh, quarterbacks are divas. Terry Bradshaw, you know, say that uh, Aaron in particular is weak because of all this. And uh, I don't understand that, you know, concept because they know more than anybody else, certainly Ron Wolf, that the financial construct of the league under the new CBA does not mean that, like, say, for Bradshaw, Mark Malone gets drafted, that they have to play. They Back in 1980, yeah. they didn't have to play him by year three to see if there was a fifth-year option to pick up. And Ron Wolf didn't have to build a team under that construct either. Like, the minute – you draft somebody like Jordan Love, you know the kid's got to get on the field within three years, and so does Aaron. He doesn't exactly. want to give him another freebie in 2021 like he did last year. Like I thought, I thought, and I love Terry. Terry's like a family member to me, and it's okay. I, I disagree with my dad on stuff all the time. So if he's my dad's brother. You know I'm going to disagree with him sometimes. But, like, I, I, I didn't agree, and I thought it was apples to oranges. And um, I think you talk about leverage, um, you know, and, yeah, we don't read people up this early, generally in the NFL. Well, they read D hop up like sight unseen last year in Arizona, you know, and certainly he deserved that, but there is a precedent that if there's a guy that you really want to take care of, you can do it, especially when he's the reason that you've been relevant as a franchise. Hmm. Like, you know how lucky you are as a franchise to go from like Brett Favre to another hall of famer. <laughs> like it's incredible. And in Indy for a second, we thought we were going that way with Peyton to Andrew and Andrew left early and, you know, it just goes to show how lucky you are as a franchise when you go from one Hall of Famer to the next. You owe him. You owe him a little something, and especially when the, 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 fa- the franchise's leverage is sitting right there in the meeting room. He's sitting right there in the meeting room every day staring you in the face. Like, of course you're going to come to the table with a chip on your shoulder. You bet against me. And that's the thing about, like, you know, the disconnect. This, teams can bet against players. Players can't bet against teams. It's like the allegiance has to be 100% one way. Well, not the other way, and that's kind of a tired complaint, but 
you know, we're talking about the best in the game. You know, I, I, I do think at some point you gotta, you gotta commit to them. Before we let Chris Long go into his Tuesday, uh, um, Chris Brockman, ask him the poll question, which you can take for tomorrow's green light if you want. Go for it. Go <laughs> we for only it. do two, two a week. All right, so ne- your next green light. Your next. Yeah, green yeah, light. Chris, this is a good one. Who most needs to be freed from their current team? Aaron Rodgers, Zion Williamson, Shohei Otani. Man, I would say it's Zion because, you know, it's must-see TV, right? I mean, everybody's clamoring around the TV to see him play, and he's going to be probably on the edge of making the playoffs, right, uh, in perpetuity in New Orleans, in my opinion. So I-, I would like to see Zion free because Aaron's doing – he's knocking on the door. You know, this is just an interpersonal problem that they have to work out. And then the Otani kid, everything seems pretty good for him too, doesn't it? Well, yes, except, uh, you know, you see the track record of Mike Trout, the modern-day mantle, and I'm concerned about the modern-day Ruth doing what he's doing and obviously can become generationally wealthy. But, I mean, Trout's this got – This guy's t- unbelievable, huh? I've never seen anything like it, honestly. I feel like we, we've, we're already desensitized. So I, I, yeah. I scrolled through a highlight earlier of this guy hitting like a four, 450-foot dinger and was just like, oh, he had another home run. It's a pitcher, dude. He's enormous. <laughs> he is enormous. I, I, you know, I've, I, I've never seen him in person. I would love to stand next to him. He looks enormous. He looks like a, he looks <laughs> like a tight end. He really does. He's unbelievable. This guy. We don't make a big enough deal about this alien. Yeah. Hey, we, alien. We, which we <laughs> talked about yesterday. Like, because you know there are UFOs, as you saw in sixty minutes this past week. Well, now they're calling them U, UFs. That's right. UAPs. UAPs. Yeah. You believe, a, Rich? Oh, my God. The truth is out there, Chris Long. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes, it is. Damn straight it is. All yes, right. Thanks is. Thanks for the call. Oh, one last thing before I let you go. Yeah. We also noticed this on your, your Twitter feed um, as well. Uh, Mark Ingram complaining that his bags get lost uh, by United <laughs> Airlines. Yeah. You you change your <laughs> change uh, your name and avatar with the blue check mark. So if you don't see the at Joel nine one, it looks like United Airlines is responding. <laughs> You're rich. Yeah. Buy clothes. Fantastic. Well, Fantastic. Well, did, did I lie? When you land and you have clothes, like, and you're rich, you go buy some clothes. But I was just busting Mark's balls. Like, I know. I love Mark. When I play Mark, he's always smiling. It's hard to be tough around Mark. But, like, he's the best dude in the world. So I picked an, a soft target. Like, I mean, that's to say, he, <laughs> but he it wasn't was the... going to be all angry at me. And he got it pretty pretty quickly. But a lot of people were thinking, man, the United guy, is like, <laughs> he had one of those uh, F you, F you, F you, you're cool, I'm, I'm out, like, uh, like moments where. So but I've done this to Fletcher Cox before. I did it with Delta a couple years ago. It happens. It... <laughs> you, know what the be- you know what the best part about Rich was? What's it? Yes. This dude has regular guy luggage when he tweeted the picture of like hey united i found yeah. my luggage no right. mark i found your luggage you're welcome um <laughs> yes. he had a big nike bag that looked like it was 10 years old i thought he was going to have skill guy luggage so i came away <laughs> with thinking even higher of mark ingram than uh, i did when i pulled the prank but the fact is that so many people had to think united airlines was just had enough they were out of you know what's to <laughs> give mean. and it just said you know you're rich buy clothes Oh my gosh, that's that's a, well done, Chris. Well, Just well done. the social media guy uh, is probably the least important guy at uh, at an airline that flies big airplanes. So if if that was the case, it wouldn't be that bad. Well, it's the same person that uh, that tweeted out that Andy Dalton was QB one, and then Justin Fields was acquired. So it's probably the same person. <laughs> <laughs> bad Come day at now. the office. Come on now. I know, Chris. Come thanks, thanks for the All time. Right. Always appreciate it, and uh, I I I I'm can't wait for the next uh, reason for you to trend. So I reach out to you. Okay. Well, maybe Jared Allen will sign some. <laughs> Outstanding pull. Thanks for the call, Chris. Right, Appreciate you. it. That's All Chris right. Long, everybody. Best. God, I love talking to him. <laughs> Smart, funny. Good Lord. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.